All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So before the Jets-Titans game started, there was a, a report that came out from Adam Schefter of ESPN, and essentially he didn't really provide us with much of an update on, you know, a solution with the whole New York jets Hassan Reddick situation. It was more so just revisiting, hey, you know what? There's still nothing. Uh, it doesn't look like there's going to be any sort of progress anytime soon. And that's it, right? This is where things currently stand. But the Jets win the game. Unfortunately, though, Jermaine Johnson, uh, it looks like he's he's going to be out for the season, right? It's such a tough blow. I, I would say he is the best pass rusher on the team right now, right? Minus Reddick. And now we're looking at moving forward throughout the season, running this style of defense that's, you know, not really a blitz heavy defense. It's a defense that really relies and puts a lot of responsibility on your forward down lineman to be able to get in the backfield and rush the passer. If you can't do that, it's going to be a long day. Typically, you're going to have quarterbacks sit back there, you know, pick you apart, uh, pick you apart in the short passing game. You also have routes developing down the field. We saw that in year one of Robert Sala, where he didn't really have many uh, pass rushers on the roster to make an impact. And that led to the Jets having the 31st ranked defense in football. So not saying that the Jets are all of a sudden going to completely fall apart because Jermaine Johnson is no longer going to be out there. But it does make uh, it does make you ask the question in a win now season, a season with a lot of pressure, you know, on this team. And it's definitely not a team that is playing mistake free football. You can look at time, you know, clock management. You can look at game plans play calling, penalties, right? The Jets did give up seven penalties for 70 yards against the Tennessee Titans. Uh, not really being all that effective uh, in stopping the run so far. Anyway, the point is, do you feel comfortable moving forward throughout the, the, the rest of the season with your edge rushers, Will McDonald, Tack McKinley, Michael Clemens, Braden McGregor, and Eric Watts? That's who we got. Right. And again, not including Hassan Reddick. So uh, what's interesting is I actually did a video kind of about the similar topic last week after the Niner game where the Jets just virtually had no pass rush against San Fran. Does it really does it crank up the pressure on the Jets, Joe Douglas specifically, to get something done to get Hassan Reddick in, you know, in the building? Right. We all know it. Reddick is a good football player. We all know that if Reddick was here, he would be the best pass rusher on the team. Maybe not immediately. Right, like that first week or two, but over time, Hassan Reddick will benefit this team. Uh, has been labeled as a closer throughout the course of his career. Uh, is somebody who's been productive over the last four seasons, really productive. He, 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 he's one of the best pass rushers in the National Football League. Period. Like he, he is that good. But this whole situation is so weird, and you know, you got the organization, you got the player at a standoff which is resulting in, in my opinion, a lose-lose. Reddick is losing a ton of money. It's obviously not a good look. I mean, he's skipping these games, getting fined roughly 800K per game uh, because he wants this new deal. Uh, some details in that Schefter report, right? Hassan Reddick has been fined, I think, over $8 million up to this point. He's scheduled to be fined over $20 million to end the season. So not only would he just, you know, not get his 14 mil, keep in mind, none of that is guaranteed, but he's also now paying, right, all this money in fines. And then it's a lose for the Jets because we could really use help in the pass rushing department. Again, Reddick would be our best one. Uh, the Jets came out and said that they're not trading him, but they're not showing any urgency to maybe get something done with him. At least we haven't heard that publicly. You know, and, and another thing, we, we gave up an asset to go get him. It would be one thing if it was, you know, Trent Williams, right, a similar situation in San Francisco. But Williams already knows the team, right? He already knows the offense. He already knows Kyle Shanahan. He's already been with the team for a couple of years. He could step in and, you know, produce right right away, maybe not at 100% max productivity. But the transition is going to be a lot more seamless compared to a Redick where brand new team, brand new coach, brand new system, playing with brand new teammates. So, you know, ideally, the quicker you get Redick in, the better it's going to be because you're going to get that 100% Reddick sooner in the season rather than later. Um, so does it crank up the pressure, right? Do, do you think the Jets should, you know, yeah, like like really try to work something out this week? It, it, it's a short week, right? I really don't think, you know, unless Hassan Reddick signs, you know, within the next couple of hours, I really don't think he's going to have an impact against New England, you know, because it, it is a short week on Thursday night. 
So you're kind of looking at that week four game against Denver as maybe Reddick's first first game with the Jets. So we'll see how it plays out. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And as always, go Jets.